Hi, this is Rachel Ryan's video blog. I interviewed five of my colleagues at the Taft School to see how they use video in their history, psychology, and science classes. I hope you enjoy. Thanks. I'm head of the science department at Taft. Uh, as you can see, I'm a science teacher and I use video quite a bit in class. One of my favorite things to do is introduce a topic uh, in agriculture, in uh, physics, any number of things, and then find a good video clip somewhere on the internet and find the part in it that illuminates the point that I'm trying to get across to my students. Uh, hit Control C and copy that web address and then uh, go to my PowerPoint or my presentation, highlight a, uh, a phrase, Control K, Control V, next thing you know I have a link and then that goes up on our learning management system and the kids have availability to it too. So video used in class, not dominatingly, but just uh, uh, to the point where it illuminates the point that we're trying to get across. Hope that helps. Uh, so uh, in environmental science, um, since we have such an intense curriculum to get through in the course of a year, we've semi-flipped our classroom by giving kids nightly videos to watch. They're only about 10 minutes and they supplement what's also in their reading. Um, along with it, we have um, put in a somewhere between eight and 12 questions every night. So as they work through the video, they can't advance the video unless they have answered the question. The question may be related to what they have just seen the video or may ask them to do a little bit of extra research to supplement the video. So all in all, it takes the kids usually about 20 minutes to watch a 10 minute video. Um, and the program we use is called Edpuzzle. We've been really happy with it. The students gripe that it takes them more time to watch their videos now that they're being quizzed on it, but we found that they definitely retain the information by being instantly quizzed on the information they're watching in the videos. Uh, the videos that we've used primarily this year have been um, from Bozeman Science by uh, Paul, Paul Anderson. Anderson. Okay. Hi, my name is Greg Haas. I teach history and government. Um, the main reason I use videos in class is sometimes I'll use them as sort of an off day. In one of my courses, we do a test and then a paper. And so I want to give them a day off from homework, but not a day off from learning. So there's a couple of videos I use every year uh, that take up pretty much a whole class period that delve into a specific issue, Putin's re-election, Tiananmen Square. In other classes, there's certain things that the emotional impact of a video can be pretty important. Uh, in U.S. history, I use one on Jacob Reese uh, that talks particularly about the plight of children in, in the Hell's Kitchen area of New York City. Um, again, very powerful. has more power than a reading or anything because of the immediacy of video. You can also use video sometimes as a primary source. I've used it, Joseph McCarthy's army hearings, uh, Kennedy's inaugural address, things like that. Uh, there's another one on the, the bringing down of the Berlin Wall that I use. So that's pretty much the reason why I use video. I'm Megan Valenti. I teach U.S. history at the Taft School. And I use video for two purposes. One, so students can see how they interact with each other during discussions. And uh, so I can see how I look when I teach, uh, mainly body language, um, really helpful to see how I work around the classroom, hand movements, um, and then again, the students to see uh, their body language too and how they react to students in discussions as well. I'm Megan Valenti, I teach U.S. History at the Taft School, and I use videos in my classroom to enhance understanding um, of content, particularly uh, with history, it's great to be able for the students to see um, video of events taking place, especially as we get more current with history, they um, enjoy it and it helps solidify their understanding and knowledge of the content. All right, I teach AP Psychology and I use video pretty much every day. The videos range from maybe a minute to maybe four minutes and they're always for a very specific purpose. Um, one of the reasons is to illustrate an idea. So when we're studying, say, Piaget's uh, stages of development or attachment theory, it's much better for the teenagers to see the five-year-old or to see the two-year-old in action as opposed to just talking about it because they are too far removed from being five or from being two to really mm -hmm. know what it means to have uh, their behaviors described to them. Um, another big reason is in terms of memory, the best way to remember something is if it has meaning, particularly if it has personal meaning and particularly if it has visual meaning. And so if you can find the right clip to illustrate something even that's going on in the teenager's life at that moment, that will help them internalize it and help them have that visual memory. Uh, a third reason is for certain biological concepts, it's really just better to see 
uh, the structure uh, in action with the word. So if we're going to try to talk about neurotransmitters being released from the synapse and absorbed by the next neuron, it's better if you can see the concept as well as hear about it at the same time. And then a fourth big reason for me is that there are some original psychological experiments that were filmed and the, uh, the power of those actual films is really um, something that you wouldn't want to not present to the kids. It's extremely powerful to see uh, Philip um, Zimbardo's Stanford Prison Experiment and to see what actually really happened and how the people uh, went way beyond something that they ever would have done if they weren't in that role or to see Stanley Milgram's experiment where they are shocking other people or they think that they're shocking other people and how they react. So the visual, in my opinion, um, speaks uh, so much more than just t talking about things. We do a lot of talking, but there's absolutely areas where the visual is the most powerful way to communicate the idea.